could be there with you in person, but unfortunately I was not able to travel. Anyway, it's an honor to be a part of the Oslo Freedom Forum. Here is my story. My name is Anastasia Shevchenko. Fifteen years ago, I began engaging in politics in Russia. Today, I am in exile, wanted by Russian authorities, arrested in my own country. But the most painful thing is that I lost my daughter. I have been detained and fined several times for protesting Putin. In January 2019, I was arrested for being a member of a so-called undesirable organization. What is my crime, you may ask? I was holding a flag in the city center that said, enough of him. When my house arrest began, I was a mother of three. One week later, I had only two children. My eldest daughter, Alina, who had disabilities, died in the hospital, all alone. I was not allowed to go to the hospital to take care of her, but I was generously allowed to attend her funeral under the supervision of an inspector and with an ankle bracelet. At the funeral, I had to remain silent because I was banned from talking, leaving the house, writing and receiving letters, and working for over two years. My younger children grew up in an instant, losing a sister and taking on many parental responsibilities. They were deprived of many rights, just like me. My daughter Vlada was 14. My son Misha was only seven. If they got sick, a doctor couldn't come to our house. Actually, no one could. Once my son got sick and went to the hospital with his sister, they were not allowed to call me from the hospital. My children put stickers on my ankle bracelet to make it less ugly. They went grocery shopping, paid bills, bought clothes, gave interviews, managed social media accounts, and reached out to human rights activists to help me. After two years under house arrest, the prosecutor demanded five years in prison for me. As I listened to him in court, I saw my daughter quietly crying when she heard the requested sentence. We waited for the court's decision for 10 days. We slept together with a nun containing my eldest daughter's ashes sitting above us. I recorded video for them for the future wishing them a good night, telling them how much I love them, and teaching them how to use household appliances without me. The children packed a bag for me in case I was sent to prison. Books, notebooks, clothing. They didn't sleep the entire night before the verdict, holding on to each other. My son fell asleep right in the courtroom, waiting for the verdict, an exhausted little curly-haired boy in the front row. I received a four-year suspended sentence. The verdict stated that I am a threat to the defense capabilities and constitutional order of the Russian Federation. If you are tired of Putin's regime, you are unwanted by the Russian criminal regime. They want terrorism, war, repression, corruption, and hate. My children, like their peers, were unfortunately born under Putin's regime. My eldest daughter, Alina, had disabilities. When she was one month old, a doctor suggested that I give her up. I refused. Finding life-saving medications for her was a challenge every month. The state simply forgot to procure them. When you criticize the government, they tell you, you are a woman, take care of your children and stay out of politics but I got involved for the sake of my children, to show them that one cannot remain silent in the face of injustice. Years later, I am in exile with my daughter who is studying politics at university and my son who became an animal advocate at school and started a seal protection party. My eldest daughter's ashes were scattered over the Black Sea. A documentary film, Anastasia, was made about our story. 
and it was shortlisted for an Oscar last year. Once at a screening of the film, a girl from Belarus approached me crying. She said I reminded her of her mother, who is imprisoned by Lukashenko. There are also Ukrainian children in the audience who wanted to go home. But there is war at home. Every day I'm horrified to think about how many children suffer at the hands of dictators. My maternal heart aches for each child, for every tear they shed, for every nightmare they endure. Today, I want to draw your attention to the most vulnerable and innocent victims of war and dictatorship, children. In times of conflict, it's often the children who suffer the most. They are forced to witness unimaginable horrors, endure unimaginable hardships and carry emotional scars that last a lifetime. Sometimes I receive letters and messages from children in Russia who are forced to line up in the shape of the letter Z in school to support the war. They are prohibited from thinking and expressing themselves. Childhood should be different. Children of political prisoners do not see their parents for years. Alexei Navalny's children will never see their father again. My friend Vladimir Karamurza was sentenced to 25 years and cannot see his three children grow up. Natalia Filonova is imprisoned and her son has been sent to an orphanage. Fail Osanov, a father of four, fought for justice in my country and now he's in prison separated from his children. There are hundreds of such stories. Thousands of children have been abducted by Putin in Ukraine. Hundreds have been killed. Thousands lose their parents in war. Children of Ukrainian prisoners of war wait for their fathers and mothers to come back and they have no contact with them. Children are deprived or their basic rights for safety, education, and health care. This is our responsibility. Every day I dedicate myself to fight for peace. I do everything possible to help, motivate, and love those who resist alongside me. I expose the cruelty and lives of Putin's regime. I support resistance. Years from now, I want to look into my children's eyes and tell them that during this terrible time, I did everything I could. I didn't remain silent. I didn't agree. I was fighting. It's our collective responsibility to protect and support these young souls and to create a world where they can thrive and grow without the shadow of war and dictatorship. Enough of them. I demand all the world governments not to recognize dictator and criminal Vladimir Putin as a legitimate president of my country. Here's something I ask you to do, if you believe like I do. Do the simple thing, sign the petition I started. No friendship with a murderer. I really believe it can provoke a crack in Putin's regime one day. I know my children and many other children will appreciate it. Let them smile. Thank you.